Lord. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to be answering a question that so many believers have been asking. I taught on the ministry of angels and um, a question came true. And I had promised that I was going to answer the question uh, sometime this week. And today, I'm going to answer the question. And the question was, do we have guardian angels? You know, there has been this, uh, will I say, teachings that everybody has one angel standing by their side, guiding them, protecting them, you know, this, that, that. But at the end of the day, when we finish this, you understand that it's not so. The ministry of angel is different. God assigns angel when we have a need for the angel. Let's assume you're in trouble. God can assign an angel to take care of you and protect you from that trouble. Let's assume God uh, is sending you on a special mission. God can assign angels to go with you on that mission, accomplish the mission, and come back. And once they come back, they disengage. You know, they don't perpetually stay with you and uh, remain there. And by the time we finish, you know, with this teaching, you will probably see that that is the way it is. And I've read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I cannot find any place that the Bible specifically talked about guardian angels. Some Bible passages may have been misinterpreted and we're just going to see how it rose. Now, I want to ask you one question. If we all had one angel assigned to us, there were about 3 million uh, people that left Egypt for Israel to the promised land. You know, that means they would have had 3 million angels with them. So if they had 3 million angels with them, so 3 million angels were not enough for God to lead them to the promised land that God had to now assign his own angel to lead them. Uh, Exodus uh, 23 from verse 20. And God sent his angel to lead the people of Israel from Egypt to the promised land and instructed them to obey uh, the angel. At least the angel can, you know, judge them right there and then kill them all. So if we had 3 million angels, God needed not to send one to go lead them through. Aside that, in the book of Matthew uh, 2.16, you know, down, you see where Jesus Christ was instructed by the angel, or uh, Joseph was instructed by the angel, angel Gabriel, to take Jesus and run to Egypt when they were slaughtering kids because Herod was threatened by the presence of Jesus coming to become the king. And Herod instructed that every child at a particular age should be killed so that at least Jesus would be among those that would have been killed by then. Now, if Jesus had one angel that was standing with him at that moment, do you think God would need to tell Joseph to take Jesus, run to Egypt, hide him there until the whole stuff is over? Uh, except if the soldiers are stronger than the angels. You get what I'm saying? So you see that at that point, God had to instruct man, take this baby to Egypt, hide this baby in Egypt till Herod is done with his madness, you know, and bring him back. You know, aside that also, in the book of Matthew uh, 26, when Jesus Christ, you know, uh, rebuked Peter for, for, for cutting off the ear of that servant. And he said, don't you think I can pray to my father and he will send 12 legions of angels. Now, look at it thoroughly. If he had angels floating around him, why does he need 12 legions? Are you getting what I'm saying? He, he needed not probably to start asking for the father to send angels. So they don't, the angels don't just float around that way. God assigns them when we need them God sends them to quickly help us, you know, in, in, in a situation that we are in, you know. And uh, there are scriptures that um, that believers have anchored on, you know, that's Matthew 18, 10, where Jesus Christ was saying, we should not despise these little kids for they are angels in heaven, not on earth. Behold the face of the Father. They are angels in heaven. Heaven beholds the face of the Father. What does that mean? It simply means that there are angels that are assigned to minister to children. There are angels assigned to minister to kids. So, you know, just like not everyone can minister to a baby. You know, you have midwives, you have uh, nannies, you have people trained to take care of babies. You know, there are angels that minister to kids from that 
book of Luke, uh, Matthew 18, 10, that Jesus mentioned, it simply says that there are angels in heaven, not there are angels on earth. If, if it were so, then no child should be involved in accidents. No child should be killed by anyone. No child should have any issue because the angels are supposed to be watching them and guarding their feet. You know, if it were so. So, but there are angels that God can send to minister to a baby when there is a need for that or when the baby is in danger. There are angels that can do that. You know, that is what Jesus was trying to say, that there are angels in heaven, not even their angel on earth. So, but people have misinterpreted this to mean that, oh, every baby has an angel assigned to them. And at the end of the day, you see babies get into accidents and babies die and all this other stuff, you know. So the operation of the kingdom is not that way, you know. And uh, another part we can see is in the book of Psalm 34, verse 7, that, that people normally quote, that the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him. Yes, the angel of the Lord will encamp around them that fear him. If they are in danger, God will send angels to encamp around them. You know, if you, if you just base your argument on that, then that means those that don't fear the Lord, they don't have angels. Is that what you want to tell me? That if you had initially said that each, each person has one angel assigned and work floating around them and watch them go into danger and watch them, you know, err and watch them, you know, make mistakes. You get what I'm saying? And the question you have to ask yourself is, if angels are the ones leading you, then what is the job of the Holy Spirit? Where does the scripture that says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, them are the sons of God. If angels are the ones leading you, then what is the job of the Holy Spirit in that situation? You know, that's for those that will say believers. So angel of the Lord will, will encamp around those that fear the Lord. When they are in danger, God will send an angel. Once there is a need, God will send an angel. There's another part again that people normally used to say that everybody has one angel floating around them or the other. And that's uh, Psalm 91, 11, the same Psalm that uh, the devil quoted unto Jesus when he was being tempted, when he said, if you jump uh, from that cliff that, you know, it is written that he will command his angels, you know, to guide you, at least you cast your foot against the rock and everything, you know, and Jesus rebuked him that thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God, you know. Yes, it is written. He commanded his angels concerning the Bible said in Matthew um, in Psalm 9 11 that he commanded his angels concerning us to lead and guide us in all our ways. He commanded that means when there is a need, God will command the angels to go forth and lead and guide if there is a need for that. If there's a need for angelic ministration, he will send his angel. But if there is no need for angelic ministration, there is no need for angels floating about and everything, you know. And But like I said before, there is a way to make angels work for us. There is a way to make angels act on our behalf. And I had said it, that one of the ways to make angels work for you is to use the word of God, you know, it, when once you say it is written, angels are at a lot. They are ready to move. They are ready to swing into action. You know, and I said also, God, you can ask God, just like Jesus said, don't you think I can ask my Father to send forth, and He will send His angels. You know, so I hope this has answered your question to know that God sends angels when we need help. That is what He does. It's not that the angels are just floating around. You know. And then watching us maybe get hot or anything, you know, or what you, you know, that's what people think. But if you ask for angelic protection, God can assign angels. That's part of their job. If you ask for, you know, God to send an angel to do a job, you know, uh, that is righteous, that concerns the kingdom, God will definitely honor it if that is his will. If it's not his will, he will not send the angels. And that's why sometimes we command angels, we say angels do this, do that, and they don't do it because it was not God's will, one. And two is that, I mean, maybe it's not something that will bring his glory. So I hope this has answered your question. Be blessed. Amen.